In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform logistic regression using analytic solver. Logistic regression is a generalization of linear regression that is used to predict a categorical outcome variable by computing the log odds of the outcome as a linear function of the input variables. As with other classification methods, logistic regression classifies an observation by using equation to compute the probability of an observation belonging to class 1, and then compare it to a cutoff value, which typically is 0.5 or 50%. If the probability exceeds the cutoff value, the observation is classified as class 1. Otherwise, it is classified as class 0. Here is the data set we're going to use in this demonstration. It contains customer information when they apply for a loan. In this example, loan default is our dependent variable. It has the values of ones and zeros. One means the customer defaulted on his loan. Zero means the customer did not default on the loan. We also have eight independent variables. They are average balance, age, entrepreneur, unemployed, married, divorced, high school, and college. Six of these independent variables are also binary data. They contain ones and zeros. Average balance and age are the numerical data. We are hoping some or all of these independent variables can help us predict whether a customer would default on the loan. We have 22,377 records. We partitioned them into 58% training set, 39% test set, and 3% validation set. Training set is the data set we use to build the candidate data model. Validation set is the data set used to compare model forecast and ultimately pick the best one. The test set is the data set that used to compute unbiased estimates of final predictive model's performance. Typically, we would like the training set to be the largest, so then we can use as many records as possible to build our model. To begin, click on data mining in the ribbon, click classify, click logistic regression. Notice that my mouse cursor is in one of the cells within the data range. This makes it easier for analytic solver to recognize the data range you are going to work on. In the data tab, you can see the current worksheet and the current file and the data range automatically selected. You don't have to worry about the training validation and test set yet. We'll take care of that using the partition column later. Make sure that the first row contains headers are checked and the selected variables are the independent variables. So we select eight of them, including average balance, age, entrepreneur, unemployed, married, divorced, high school, and college. For the output variable, that's our dependent variable, and that will be the loan default. Make sure that the number of classes is 2. The success class is 1. Class 1 means that the customer would default on a loan, and class 0 means the customer will not default on a loan. The success probability cutoff is 0.5 or 50%. So if we have a customer with the outcome less than 0.5, that means the customer will not default on a loan. Otherwise, he would default on a loan. Click Next. Click Partition Data and check Partition Data. And let's use the Partition column. We already partition and label which records used for which set. Here, make sure to check the fit intercept because we want to also include the model with only intercept when none of the variables. In the iteration, we want to use the max of 50. There should be a good balance of how many iterations you want to use because not only it creates the overhead of computing, but also it may cause overfitting because the iterations will start with the model that was least variables, and then it will increase the number of the variables. And as the result, if you run too many iterations, your model may be very well fitting the training set, but not so well with the test set or reality. So that's what we call overfitting problem. We want to check, display the analysis of coefficients. 
and we want to click on the feature selection. We want to perform the feature selection with the maximum subset size of 8 because we have 8 independent variables. We want to, in this case, select the best subsets. The number of subsets is 2. Therefore, we are going to generate 8 times 2 equals to a total of 16 models. So the goal of feature selection is selecting the features or attributes that are most impactful to the output variable. Therefore, they contribute to the model the most. Best subsets is the most comprehensive method in analytic solver as a feature selection. It considers every possible combination of the variables, but is typically appropriate only when dealing with fewer than 10 independent variables. So when you deal with many variables, best subset may cost too much computing as it will require constructing hundreds of alternative methods. So in the case between 10 and 20 variables, you want to use backward selection because it eliminates the unhelpful variables. Backward elimination begins with all possible variables and sequentially removes the least useful variable based upon the statistical significance. When you have more than 20 variables, you probably want to use the forward selection as it identifies the most helpful variables. There is also stepwise selection method. Uh, it starts with no variables, but at each step, and it will both insert and remove a variable based on the F statistics. There's another one called sequential replacement. It considers models with a fixed number of values by inserting a new variable whenever one is removed. So in this example, we're using the best subsets method. Click next and finish. The log reg output worksheet gives us the estimates of the coefficient for the logistic regression model, including all the independent variables that we selected. So with this information, we can formulate the logistic regression model so that the probability of the loan default will equal to 0 0.67 minus 0 0.0005 times average balance minus 0 0.006 times age plus 0 0.577 times entrepreneur and so on. The signs of the coefficient just like linear regression also has meaning. For example, average balance has a negative coefficient. This means that a customer's average balance increases, the probability of loan default would decrease. Divorce has a positive coefficient. This means that divorced customer will have a higher probability of loan defaults than non-divorced customers. We can also take a look at the p-value. Similar to linear regression, p-value in the logistic regression can give us some guidance on how the variables will be helpful to our model. We can see that married has the highest p-value, 0.619. This indicates that married may not be that helpful to our model. The lower the p-value, the more statistical significance it is. So other similar high p-value variables, including age, and high school degree, those can be the candidates to be eliminated using feature selection. The log reg FS worksheet contains the feature selection results. Remember earlier we chose to output 16 subsets, including subset 1 with only the intercepts and none of the independent variables, and subset 16 including everything. The best subset details table provide us several metrics to help us select the best subset. In general, we prefer a model with fewer predictor variables or independent variables. When we sort through the subsets, we are looking for a subset that gives us low RSS, a low model CP, and a high probability. RSS stands for residual sum of squares 
and it computes the sum of square deviations between the predicted probability of success and the actual value. So we prefer a model with a smaller ISS. The probability, we can treat it as the p-value in hypothesis. We prefer a higher value of probability, and we can rule out models that give us value less than 0.05 probabilities. From subset 14 to subset 15, we see a decrease of the RSS, and we see a decrease of model CP. However, we see an increase of the probability. This shows us that subset 15 is a reasonably good model. Going to the best subsets table, we can see that subset 15 contains seven independent variables, not the married. And this is consistent with previously when we analyzed the p-value for the married is the highest, which shows that it's the least significant to the model. In some versions of the Excel, Analytics Solver allows you to click on the link and then automatically generates a new model with the selected variables. However, it doesn't work in my Mac version, so I'm just going to manually recreate this new model without the married variable. So going back to still, this is the base of our model training. So we'll go to classify, logistic regression. Here we choose everything except for married and everything else stays the same. Click next. We don't need the feature selection and click next. We're going to need the detail report and lift charts and check in worksheet. And here we're going to plug in the new data to predict and where we have 30 new records, we don't know the loan default, we're going to use our new model to predict them. And here we will click match by name. So this way the new models uh, variable would match with the column name of the new data and click finish. The log reg new score shows us the predicted results of loan defaults for all the 30 new records. This table also displays the estimate probability of class one membership, which is loan default, and the classification using the cutoff value of 0.5. So for example, the first record has an estimate probability of 0.3828 for defaulting on loan. Based on that cutoff value of 0.5, we predict that the observation is class zero, or this customer is not going to default on a loan. Also on the log reg test score one worksheet, we can see the classification error. So we can see that class one error is 22.29% and the class zero error is 53, is 53.06%. This is not like a great result. Of course, we are only showing this as an example. The F1 score is only 5%. Typically, we're looking for a high F1 score for a good performance. Uh, this may mean that we need to further tune up our model, maybe performing further feature selection.